everyone. Uh, I just want to do a little uh, tackle talk on what I used on Lake Fork, uh, which was you know a few weeks ago now. Pretty good tournament. Ended up finishing 18th. Caught some big fish. Uh, so I just want to kind of run down what I was doing. I've got a lot of different rods, but it really boiled down to two or three key ones. But I did get some good fish on a couple other things that I'll talk about. So the first thing, kind of what I uh, started out getting my first nice one with the first day was just a, um, a Rapala DT16, which this is actually a 10, but I was throwing, I was throwing a 16 in the tournament. Um, I was throwing that on the St. Croix Victory Max Cranker Rod, which the Max Cranker it's a 710 extra heavy power, moderate fast. So it's a crankbait, you know, specific rod. And I think it was more designed for bigger crankbaits. Like when I originally got them to try, I wanted them for like an 8XD, stuff like that. And, uh, but I really liked it for like a 5XD, DT16, DT14, um, worked really, really well for, for them too. So that's the rod I was using, a 14 pound Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon. Um, six four to one reel. It's actually an old Garcia Revo Premier, one of my favorites. Uh, so that was kind of the setup with that. I only caught one fish in the tournament, but it was a four pounder. So you know, kind of a key fish. It was the first one I caught the first day. So DT sixteen, Victory Max Cranker, uh, fourteen pound Sunline FC Sniper. Uh, the other one that first day that I caught one once again one key fish on another about four pounds was just a drop shot and this is actually a prototype of the new legend tournaments 610 medium light extra fast it's the drop shot specific rod I had a 10 pound Sunline SX1 braid to a 10 pound FC sniper fluorocarbon leader 3 out um, owner cover shot hook and I just had a, a reddish colored finesse worm on there and then a uh, Motley Fishing Tungsten Drop Shot Sinker. Only caught the one fish on it, but uh, it was a good one. And then from then on, I, I didn't throw much of the crankbait or the drop shot. The first day, two of the key fish I caught, a five and a half pounder and a four pounder, were on a football jig, three quarter ounce, one that I make, uh, big bite twin tail trailer, which is an awesome, awesome football jig trailer. Um, 20 pound Sunline shooter fluorocarbon on the rod that you hear me talking about all the time use it for a lot of different things and that's the victory full contact which is a 7.4 heavy power fast action I absolutely love it for a football jig flip in just a ton of different things so uh, I do throw the football jig on the same thing in the uh, in the legend but uh, the Legend Extreme, but once again, this has got a little more power. So in that deeper water, bigger fish, I wanted a little more backbone. So that's why I went with this. And then from then on, it kind of transitioned into two key baits the rest of the tournament, with the exception of one. Uh, the second day, I did catch right away in the morning. I caught a six-pound, nine-ouncer. Um, you know a big one on a magnum shaky head. I had a 5 8 ounce 8 dot. It's actually an owner Football shaky head with a screw lock on it. And I had a like a 10 inch straight tail finesse worm on it 20 pound sunline shooter and I had it on the new legend tournament The flipping rod which is a heavy. It's a 7 6 heavy power, but it's a moderate fast and man it was perfect for throwing that big shaky head i caught a whole bunch of fish on it on gunnersville the next week i mean if you're looking for a magnum shaky head route I, I don't know i this thing was awesome really loaded up nice cast a long ways really solid hook set 20 pound sunline shooter uh fast reel 7.4 gear ratio reel but i only caught the one on it but it was a big one so that guy from then on it transitioned it transitioned heavily into, you know, the second day, the the lock and load, the Creegee lock and load jig, and I had a a big bite chunk trailer on it, and they make a color called 1099, which is kind of a black blue green pumpkin blue, 
I just a color I really like throwing on the watermelon candy, which is probably my number one color, that or black and blue, a half ounce. And you know, this jig has that screw lock, so once you get that chunk on there, it's it's not going anywhere. But the only time you have to change your chunk is if you know you rip a claw off or it just gets so wore out it's falling apart. But uh, 25 pound sunline shooter, fast reel, 8 1 reel, and then once again on that full contact, 7 4 heavy. Uh, love the rod. I caught several fish the second day on it, including my biggest one of the tournament, which was a 715, or I'm sorry, a 6 pound 15 ouncer. Um, but I had this kind of filled out my limit the second day. I had uh, one fish when I started flipping, and I ended up filling out my limit on that. And then after that, uh, I transitioned into. I kind of got onto something while I was flipping. I saw some fish come up schooling on a point, and that transitioned me into just a, an old school three hook uh, head and super spook. And it's kind of, you know, it's bone color, bone silver. Uh, I like the three hook one, and then I modified. You can kind of see in there, this one, the, the hook sprung a little bit, but I double split ring all my walking baits. Uh, just so the hooks don't bind up. I feel like you get a lot better hook up on them and you get a lot better landing ratio That's my personal preference. I'll probably do a video on that just to kind of explain what I do um, I think it really helps a lot. So I ended up catching a lot of my fish The last day and the second day I caught a lot of fish on this bait um, I had it on a glass rod. This is the Mojo glass and it's called the Big Cranker. So it's a crankbait rod. It's a 7.4, medium heavy power, moderate action. So it's really, really super, super soft, which I think is key with a topwater bait, especially a walking bait. And I had 30 pound Sunline SX1 braid, and I had it to just a short section of Sunline shooter fluorocarbon. And I know you're thinking, well, fluorocarbon sinks, it's gonna pull the bait down. But with a real short section um, in a heavy, you know high float bait like this it really doesn't affect it and the reason I put that on there it's not for visibility it's not that I think the fish are going to see the line I just do it because um, what will happen with that braid is it's real it, it's real supple so when you start walking the bait and getting aggressive with it what will happen is the line will come back and get caught in the hooks so I just use that short piece of 20 pound just because it's real stiff and, and it, it still can happen but very rarely does that happen does your line get caught in your hooks so caught several key fish on this i caught a six six one on the second day um you know which was my best day i had 26 and a half pounds uh so that was a key player um i had it on a this is actually a 13 fishing reel one that i just had laying around but it cast really well i don't know i really like it for this and that's just a six six gear ratio i don't know good setup um really like the braid to floral with a soft rod for walking baits i just haven't found anything better uh, i really feel like i'd land them a lot better than when i used to run straight monofilament and then the last thing which came into play the last day was uh, a mike buka bull shad this is a six incher and this is one of the old school ones kind of the one that got them going you don't hear as much about anymore it's actually a one knocker bone color uh, you know it's a hard jointed swim bait and the fish that I was catching on that top water on that walking bait were real shallow I'm talking less than two foot of water up on a sand point and they were chasing gizzard shad and threadfin shad and I knew they were up there and I would get them triggered with that that spook but I knew there was other that had to bite other things so the third day I sat down tied this on and the second cast I caught my biggest fish it was a five pound ten ouncer and I caught a few other fish on it but uh, it seemed like they got conditioned to that spook and when I threw this thing up there and I was burning it as fast as I could it, it seemed like it really triggered them and I caught I think two fish that I weighed I think my two of two of my bigger fish came on on, on the, the bullshit and I was throwing that on the St. Croix Legend Elite, seven foot, 11 inch, heavy power, moderate fast. 
you hear me talk about the moderate fast all the time. I like something a little bit more parabolic with, with uh, treble hook baits, um, especially a heavy bait like that that I feel like they can throw real easy. Um, 25 pound Sunline Shooter fluorocarbon, old school Shimano Corrado. I mean, this thing's 25 years old, but it still casts good, super smooth, pretty much bulletproof, holds a lot of line. Uh, I really like that reel for for uh, for situations where I need a bigger reel to hold a, a lot of heavy line. So those were kind of the key baits. Uh, like I said, it ended up being a pretty good tournament. I didn't have that high of expectations going into it. Kind of a tougher practice, but I, I adjusted really well on day two and, and found a shallow area. Got fortunate to see some fish come up schooling. And that's kind of where I spent the majority of the rest of the tournament. And I ended up, you know, finishing 18th. So, so pretty good finish. After that tournament, I was in 12th in the AOI standings, which was outstanding. I mean, it's great. Um, so that's kind of the rundown on the tackle. Uh, I'll do another one here for, uh, for Pickwick. So, and then keep your eyes open for the recap video. I will try to do that for both of the last events. So thanks for following on. Make, make sure you subscribe and I appreciate all the support.